Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I already know you came in expectation, right? One minister said it like this. <laughs> Never run at your giant silent. Never run into any battle with your mouth shut. <laughs> big giants require big shouts. I gather there might be a battle or two going on. Pastor Nancy said, and she quoted that scripture, uh, there's a great door and an effectual door set right before us. And yet there are many adversaries. What of it? I don't deny they're not there. I can feel the pushback trying to keep me from going all the way in. But I'm going to shout down any wall. I'm going in the promised land. I'll take down any giant. What? They don't have a covenant. I do. Turn to two people and say, I got a covenant, and so do you. Give me that loop. I need some more vocal in my monitor so I don't lose my voice. Let me hear that loop. Shout with the voice of triumph. I need the loop up. I can hardly hear it, brother. Shout again, somebody. I need. I, I can't hear it. Where's my loop? Bring it up. Shout with the voice of triumph. Is the vocal? Shout with the voice of praise. Bring up the loop. Shout with the voice of triumph. Shout with the voice of praise.
monitor. Let me see if I can count this in. Hallelujah. Y'all good over there? I just got to make sure you're playing. I can't hear you. I just, I guess we're playing by faith. Take it down. Take it down. endures forever. Can you shout amen? Turn to at least two or three people and say, it's your night tonight. It's your night tonight. It's your night tonight.
tell you a little of his goodness. Last night there was a lady here, Pastor Nancy, that uh, you laid hands on and for healing. She had not been, this was for over six months, she had, uh, uh, she had not been able to sleep more than, uh, what, two hours a night, I think. Last night you laid hands on her. This has been going on for three months. Last night you laid hands on her because no medication was helping. The doctors trying to treat it wasn't helping. But you laid hands on her last night, and last night she slept from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. for signs, wonders, miracles. Thank you for changed lives. We thank you, Father, for divine intervention and what the devil was doing in people's lives tonight. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Greet three people and tell them he's good to you. He's good to you. He's good to you. Praise God. Good to have you tonight. Welcome to Camp Meeting 2023 Cedar Rapids. I'm telling you, we've been having a time. If this is your first night, I'm just telling you in a good way, you're in for it. <laughs> God's got something for you. We're glad to have you here tonight. And those watching by live stream, welcome. We're so glad to have you. We've been having a wonderful time. God's power's moving. Pastor Nancy's preaching and uh, things are happening, miracles, and so we're so excited. Welcome to you as well. Thank you for joining us. Let us know where you're from. We, we, oh, by the way, I got a report today, already 20, 20 countries have tuned in, 28 states, and uh, that's just the beginning. We just only had, what, half the services or whatever, so uh, praise the Lord. So, so thankful that you've come. We're going to go ahead this evening and uh, receive the normal uh, Wednesday night tithes and offerings because this is a church night here at the church. And uh, there are uh, church members here and they're wanting to bring their tithes and their offerings. So uh, this is not the guest speaker's offering, all right? So don't put it in this offering and think it's going to the guest speakers. This is just for the normal, um, you know, the normal church giving. Now, how many of you believe in the local church? Uh, we were taught well, Pastor Nancy and Dr. Dufresne, they taught us well that you always take care of the local church. Amen. It's because of the local church that's here that these meetings are able to be on tonight. So we support the local church. Dr. Dufresne taught us that. Pastor Nancy taught us that. So let's just go ahead and take care of that, uh, the tithes and offerings. Praise God. If you're making out checks, make them to Spirit of Faith Family Church. And... Uh, and uh, by the way, could I say this? Uh, I think some of you have been wanting to get in on Pastor Nancy's uh, birthday. Uh, we've been given, well, well, praise the Lord, there's more coming. I'll just say that. But if you want to get in on that, then you're welcome to put on that. Uh, there's an envelope there. If you want to, uh, you can't give for, to her birthday by electronic giving, but you can give by the envelopes. You can give by just putting on the envelope, Pastor Nancy. Down there at the bottom of the envelope, there's a line called Other. If you want to get in on that and... Uh, and uh, be a part of that, then put it on other, put down there Pastor Nancy or Pastor Nancy's birthday or something like that, just so we know that that's where that goes because we're going to give all that to her. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So thank you for your giving. Everybody ready to give in the tithes and offerings that wants to give tonight? All right. Father, we're grateful tonight for the local church. We thank you, Father, for a place to call home. Thank you for our own company. Thank you, Father God, for the corporate house that gathers 
uh, regularly to fellowship around your word and to feed on your word, to grow in faith, and also, Father, to form a corporate house. We're blessed tonight, Father, for the, the privilege of calling, having a place to call home. We bless you, Father God, with our tithes and for bringing our tithes tonight. We thank you as we put you first. We thank you. Every need is met in our lives. In the name of Jesus, and every tither said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. How many singers want to think about the Lord? When I think about the Lord, how He saved me, how He raised me, how He filled me with the Holy Ghost. to heaven one second hallelujah let's just flow for just a couple of minutes here calibrate our heart to heaven hook up your heart right now by faith hallelujah lord we love you tonight we thank you for your plan for every service we thank you for every part of every service we thank you that we're sons of god therefore we're led by the spirit of god we thank you you lead guide reveal you show us and you lead us and so, Lord, we give you praise. Let's just say that we give you praise.
you here for just a second. I want to talk to the church family. There's about 50%, maybe 40% actually singing and entering in. And when you do that, you're capping the anointing. And so what's happening is I'm trying to follow and find which way the Spirit of God is moving. So what we're going to do is everyone's going to lift up your hands right now. Everybody's going to lift up your hands right now. And everybody's going to lift up your voice and just magnify Jesus right now. I'm not coming down on you, but it's school of the Spirit. So we magnify. <laughs> we lift the name of the Lord. We lift the name of the Lord most high. We love you. We exalt you. We adore you, Lord. We hunger and we thirst for the glory of the Lord, we give you all the praise. <laughs> we give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. We magnify your name. We give you the praise. <laughs> Don't you love him? Don't you love him? Hallelujah. Lord, now and just say that. See, that's what a church servant is. That's what a church service is. It's when the family comes together to worship. But we need everyone to worship. I don't need any kinks in the hose. I need a flow. God is trying to get some stuff to you in this room tonight. Don't short circuit it. Go one more time and we with worship. Ah, we worship you, Jesus. Jesus. jump back up here with us somehow when you get on the platform with us it just increases yeah I'm gonna sing <laughs> you're my rocks
Lift your voice and give him praise tonight. Your neighbor can't praise for you. You praise him. He's done something for you. You praise him. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. You are good. You are good. You are good. Your mercies endure forever. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you. You're not done being good. You have more to do. You have more to show us. Hallelujah. We worship you tonight. We're grateful for your plan. We're grateful for this gathering. We're grateful for your presence. We thank you, Father, for meeting needs tonight. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory and all the praise in advance. Hallelujah. There's no one else worthy, so we give it to you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, you may be seated. Glory to God. Don't forget to schedule services uh, tonight, of course, 7 o'clock. Then tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, uh, same schedule like we had the last two days, 10 o'clock in the morning and also 7 o'clock at night. And uh, tomorrow night will be the last night for this camp meeting, but not the last night for God moving in this place. And, but we're, we're excited about all these meetings. We had... Uh, uh, wonderful time they, in, the, in the praise and uh, worship school today, also in the prayer school. Uh, God moving in both places, praise God. So that'll be also tomorrow again also. Praise God, you want to come to that, don't you? And so we want to encourage you. I want to, uh, tonight, we're going to uh, do something in, uh, here that we uh, sometimes do from time to time in the camp meeting, and that is we have had, uh, the church here has had a ministerial organization and uh, those that are spiritual sons and daughters that come up under us in the church here that are raised up and trained for what the, that are called to the ministry they have a five-fold ministry call and uh, they're faithful to sit under the training and pre be prepared and let us speak into their life and and so forth we hey, we we license them and ordain them as the time is appropriate when they're ready to go out into the ministry and so we have a couple tonight we want to uh, lay hands on and uh, it really it's a licensing first of all that just simply means that's the first step and then they be faithful for a couple of years and then we'll ordain them into the full ministry but um, they're going to come just here in a moment and we're going to lay hands on them I'm going to ask my wife of course to come in a, in a moment and she's going to come and then the Pastor Nancy's going to come and lay hands on them separate them into the ministry and so um, because they've proven a divine call they've been faithful to prepare they have proven the, the kind of character that they are ready for this. And uh, in this case, this, this couple is going to move, actually has already moved their belongings, but they're back here now. But they are moving to Lee Summit where we're starting the second church, uh, Spirit of Faith Family Church, Lee Summit. Now that's Lee Summit is a suburb of Kansas City. It's on the Missouri side. So if you've got any relatives that are down there looking for a good church, I tell you, I, I know one down there. We haven't started full scheduled services yet, but uh, once we get the building secured, we're going. Full bore, praise God. Somebody said, how are you going to do that? Shaka manaba kieta brasaya. That's how we're going to do it, praise God. Just wanted to tell you. So, um, so I'm going to ask that, uh, I'm going to come down here on this level, but I'm going to ask that Andre and Maya Echols come. They are uh, somewhere. Brother Andre is playing organ up here or playing something. And uh, they're, always, they're always involved, everything going on around here, they're always involved. And so, um, praise the Lord. And uh, I'm just going to, you know, Paul, if you don't mind stepping back just a little bit. Um, thank you. Paul, I'm going to step over here. He's so tall, I can't even see you. <laughs> but um, I'm going to uh, do like Paul, the Apostle Paul. Uh, he charged Timothy with some things whenever he was ordained into the ministry. This is not an ordination. This is a licensing. But I do want to follow that example and give them a charge. So if you'll just let me for a moment. I'm not going to take very long here. I just want to say some things to them and uh, remind them of some of the things that you have learned. Um, just, just a few things just to uh, keep you on the track, keep you on the right track. First of all, Proverbs chapter number 22, verse 28, it says, Remove not the ancient landmarks which your fathers have set. And so I want to charge you with Debbie and I's landmarks that we put into your life by not, not only the teachings, but the example, the lifestyle, the character, the manner of living, the consecration, walking in love, uh, crucifying the flesh, 
walking by faith, always living, by, living with joy. And uh, those are landmarks, all the teachings you've had, all the impartations you've had. Those are landmarks for your life. And I want to charge you to live by them. And uh, they're, they're there to orient your life. Uh, anytime you are reminded of a story that we told or, or, or a service that we preached something or something we shared in private, in private conversations, that's a landmark. The Holy Ghost will bring those things back to you and it'll help you orient, you know, in making decisions and going forward. And so uh, I want to remind you not to move those landmarks because they're, they're there to orient your life. And uh, God connected you here to be marked. He didn't send you somewhere else. There's, there's other good places, but he sent you here. And so that, those marks, that tr- I, I might call it the training you've received, the things you've received. Um, don't let those, don't move from that training. Stay with it. Those are your, those, that's for your safety. It's for your longevity. And uh, so those landmarks were laid down in your life to keep you on track. And uh, the, 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 that's, that's uh, something that you'll continually refer back to. And so I want to just encourage you to do that. Second of all, I want to say whenever, it's, whenever you're preaching and teaching, preach the Word. Yes, Amen. Not your opinion, but just preach the Word. And repetition is for their safety. Yes. Going back over it again and again, yes. just like you've heard some of these things over and over again. Repetition is for their safety. Yes. So don't be afraid. Just, just like I told you, Brother Hagin, knock the fear of repetition out of me. Uh, you, you just don't be afraid to go over it all again. And so uh, you don't have to preach something new. Just preach what you've already learned. Then I want to charge you to know your adversary. Every, uh, every, uh, every call of God that is on a man or a woman of God, there's a strategy of the enemy to try to oppose you. And it's unique. Many times it's unique from one to the other. Know that adversary. But more than that, become skillful. And whatever it is, he keeps trying, trying, trying to use to trip you up. Become real skillful with that adversary. And uh, because uh, Satan is... Uh, you know he's got strategies so know what those things are talk about the things between yourselves and know what those are and become real skilled now I want to also say just stay put in the hard places first Peter 5 10 talks about after you've suffered a while make you perfect establish strength and settle you there's going to be some things that are going to want to make you quit and uh, number one don't let each other quit but encourage yourself in the Lord Amen. Just stay put because uh, there's, there's a lot of maturity in just staying put. Just staying faithful. A lot, a, lot, a lot of things will just get knocked out of you. Just staying faithful. So uh, it'll make you grow up in a hurry. But uh, do, do that. Uh, whatever comes against you, uh, just, learn to, uh, just learn to rejoice. I, I know you know how to do that, but I'm just saying just keep getting better and better at it. Also, I want to encourage you to stay properly connected. Because that's, that's uh, you know, what God started here. He want, he's not going to change that. Just stay properly connected to where God connects you. And uh, it'll, it'll, it'll continue to pay off because there's more for you. Um, here's some verses I want to read, and then we're going to lay hands on you. Psalm 127, verse 1. Except the Lord build the house, you're going to labor in vain to build it. And so, um, you know, don't, don't look to man for promotion. Don't look to, uh, you know, whatever programs that you, you are inclined of. But let the Lord promote you. Um, he'll bring it to pass. Everything that's in your heart, he'll bring it to pass. And uh, he'll prepare you ahead of time for what he has for you. So be faithful in that preparation time. I know you're stepping into another phase now, but there's going to be more preparation. I'm always in preparation for what God's doing next. So just stay faithful to that. 2 Corinthians 5.10 says, there, uh, you must, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to what he has done, whether it's good or bad. So I want to encourage you to live every day as though, uh, with keeping in mind that you're going to have to stand before the Lord and give an account. Not only for your lives, but for the example you set to others. And then also for what you taught and you preached. It's a dangerous thing to sow wrong things into the body of Christ. And so you'll have to give an account. Live every day just thinking about the fact now, is this going to be acceptable when I stand before him? Then the last, uh, 2 Timothy uh, 6, uh, verse number 12, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto you are also called and profess the good profession. So just live by faith. I mean, you know, if it hair lips the devil, just keep on going. Amen. Amen. And uh, I said that was the last one. That's not the last one. Second Timothy says, uh, I put you in remembrance. You stir up the gift of God that's on the inside of you. There's going to be times nobody's going to be around to stir you up. 
You know what I mean? But you just stir yourself up in the Lord and remind yourself that you're called and that uh, God's in you, God's with you, God's for you, and you can't fail. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then I'm going to just say, uh, like Paul said in 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 2, uh, I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead, that includes you and I, at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. And uh, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And uh, sometimes that takes, uh, you know, some persistence because, <laughs> you know, it's like raising children. You got children, you know. It's like, well, you got to say the same thing over and over again. Just keep saying it. Just keep saying it. And then and the last thing, this is the last thing. Finally, I'm just going to say, run your race with joy. Just keep the joy. Amen. Because you heard Pastor Nancy say, in the rejoicing, the power flows. Yes. And I'm telling you, there's one thing you'll never do is finish your course without power. That's right. yeah. So you got to have power. And so uh, run it with joy. And uh, the abundance that belongs to you and all the increase, it'll continue to come. And uh, so keep that power flowing by rejoicing, praising, and worshiping God. And do it as a family. Do it in your home. Yes. Amen. Yes. Honey, would you come? I'm going to invite Pastor Nancy to come. And uh, if you would, in the congregation, would you stand, please? We're going to lay hands on them. And uh, I'm going to ask Pastor Nancy to lead it, if you would, Pastor. And uh, reach your hands out toward them as we pray. Thank you for the greatness of the plan. We honor that plan tonight. And this night is included in your plan. And so, Father, we thank you that as they move forward, that they move forward with the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, that you give unto them that spirit of wisdom, yeah. the spirit of revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of their spirits being enlightened, yes. that they may know what is the hope of your calling, what the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints and what is exceeding greatness of your power to usward who believe. May they stand perfect and complete in all the will yes. of God. And we pray right now that their faith will not fail. In Jesus' you, name. Jesus. And we thank you, Father, that when they stand before your people, we pray that you give them words from heaven. Yes. The people need what you have to say to them. And so we thank you, Father, for giving them that understanding, that utterance, that every time they stand, they realize that they're there to be your channel. Yes. That they're there to, as available to you. So we thank you for your blessing thank upon you. them. In Jesus', Jesus name. name. Father, we lay hands on them, and we, any giftings, any endowments, any impartations, any equipment they need, we believe you to impart it into them now as we separate them into this phase of their life in Jesus' name and their ministry, and we thank you for it. Everybody said? Hallelujah. Amen. Um, can I ask something? Sure. They have children? Yes, they do. There's something about what comes to me, the strategies against your children. Um, watch over them in the spirit but not in fear because there will there's there's planned some things but God also has a plan for their safety and their protection so I'm just prompted to remind you hold 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 that up before God not from a place of fear something going wrong but from a place of we're already anchored Amen. Amen. So I'm to be forewarned is to be forearmed. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because if the devil can't get you off, he'll try to work through those closest around you and try to come in through other ways. And I'm not saying that's immediate. I have I don't know anything about the ages of your children, but I'm just saying that's what he says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Anything else? Uh, the, the, uh, the angels of heaven are now assigned for protection over those children. And, and you speak much about their activity, especially on behalf of your children. And let the angels know what their assignment is. They know, but you just say it all the time in the name of Jesus and it has to do not just with uh, you know physical protection but uh, 
protection from wrong relationships and influences. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that healing anointing in your hands. Don't forget to lay hands on the sick so that that might be imparted unto them in Jesus' name. Praise God. Ah, yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. <laughs> I apologize. Would you guys come back up here? We have your ordination, your licensing papers. Pardon me? This is for Brother Andre. Where's Brother Andre? And then your uh, card. There you go. And uh, Miss Andre. Uh, Miss, Miss, Miss. Uh, that's Dr. Dufresne's anointing right there. That's Dr. <laughs> Miss Maya. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Praise the Lord. You, you may be seated. Uh, we're going to receive a second offering here, and I'll tell you who and where it's going in just a second. Um, again, Pastor Nancy, I believe said by the Holy Ghost in one of the first services, this, this meeting would be School of the Spirit. I just want, you know, we've taken time in the afternoon to talk about um, things in, pertaining to worship and music, the musical part of the service. For those that play, I, w- I want you to notice just a moment ago, Deborah, stop for just one second. I'm, I'm, we're demonstrating. Do you, when she so accurately read the moment, when Pastor Debbie and Pastor Jay, when they first started ministering, you were playing, but then no one told you to just pause there for a minute. Sometimes you do want to pause if it's tongues and interpretation. Not always. But many times you do. When I grew up in my dad's Pentecostal church, and I think most of you know, I grew up Church of God. My great-granddad was one of the five original founders of the uh, denomination. And uh, we, we were taught always, when that weightier glory comes, be very sensitive he may want you to stop playing. He may want you to play, not may. He's probably going to have you play in a different way. Once you sense, you know, if I could just say it like this, it, are you able, I'm going to use you, is this all right? Are you able to sense that I just got near you? Are you able to sense that I just sat down on top? Okay, so... At time, ministers, ministries, churches, you can measure things by the weight of his presence. That's why I know this is a weighty church. It's in the atmosphere. Glory, heavy with everything good. When you come into a meeting and you come into a ministry or you're sitting under a minister, just measure the weight of his presence if there's nothing there you might not belong there (laughs) if you give me the choice of going to McDonald's, Burger King or Wendy's or a five star restaurant I don't know about you but I'm going to choose the weightier matter if I walk into McDonald's it's just like frothy light no one's paying attention No, it doesn't matter. Cookie cutter. You don't expect anything different because they don't offer anything different. It's the same hamburger and the same french fries. And it's the same two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. And your only choice is if you want small, medium, large, or supersized. That's it. But it's the same stuff. But if you go to a weightier restaurant they'll come to the table and they'll say now today we're serving today's fresh catch is today we uh, now they won't say it like this we just freshly slaughtered a cow and you ought to get the steak <laughs> I'm just saying 
skip the chicken them chickens were killed two weeks ago but go with the cow <laughs> betsy was alive this morning she's gone on to glory now she left her body eat that one so my point is see you're not in a mcdonald's church the biggest criticism i ever got well god there were so many pastoring <laughs> <laughs> and I know where you're laughing. <laughs> I know. We never know what you're going to do. You're constantly changing it up. And your point is what? I don't pastor McDonald's. Now, if you're called to work, if you want to be employed by McDonald's, help yourself. But see... <laughs> Now, I'm not better than anybody else, but there's a weight to the call that matters. Do, do, do make my point there. And so we're, we're building up to an offering here, but, but it, when you come into a church like this, this is the first time, y'all, I've been to Cedar Rapids. My kids are in shock when I said, y'all, I went somewhere I've never been before. They're like, Dad, we didn't think a spot on the earth existed that you had not been. It's the truth. They are in shock that I'm in a city where I've not been before. But I am. I've known your pastors since 1995 in the Effingham camp meetings. This is the first time I've been in this local church. I knew things about the church before I ever got there because the church is an extension of them. I also knew things about them because of who they're hooked up to. So I didn't have to fast and pray to get it. I thought, well, if they're connected to that, that means this is that and that is this. But when I came into your church, this is a weighty church. The weight of his presence is in this room. Now, lift up your hand if this is your local church and these are your pastors. L keep it up. L let me just say one thing because that's the other thing that people, say, people <laughs> used to say to me. We like this church, but you're not our pastor. That's like one of my kids saying, we like the house that you provided, but you're not my dad. You live in my house, I'm your daddy. And Wendy J. Ellis is your mama. The house and the parents go together. So you put your, now here's why that matters. Because when you come to a place like this, you're used to weightier matters. You're used to eating and being served five-star food. You're a blessed people. And then we, I, I'm all up for let's go Michelin four stars or three stars, whatever stars we can get to, let's go to the top if, if we have time to do that. But my point is if I'm constantly eating that, I become almost inoculated to how good the diet is. Your pastor did not ask me to say this. He, 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 he told me a few minutes before the service you're receiving the offering and I was hoping you'd say tomorrow night. I really was. But I trust the Holy Ghost. I went, sure, sure, whatever. I, ha I had no thought until I walked on the platform. That's when I got a thought. That's the truth. Because I sensed the weight of his presence, and I just had a little leading there. And so I also want to say this, because the offering and all the offerings uh, of the evening are going to Pastor Nancy Dufresne and Dufresne Ministries. Now, let me also say this. Your individual prosperity is connected to the company you keep camp with. Let me say it one more time. This is really for the ministers, okay? And, but it's really, God is so up for your individual prosperity. Do you understand that? I can quote more, and you can too. You know, 
shout for joy and be glad those that favor my righteous cause let them say continually let the Lord be magnified which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant remember the Lord thy God and that it is he that gives you the power to get wealth I wish pray desire above all things that you be in health and prosper even as your soul prospers the blessing of the Lord it maketh rich and he has no sorrow to it he was made poor that I through his poverty you know all that you're well taught you made a statement in one of the services and said a lot of you, your prosperity has been short-circuited or is capped or limited because you haven't fully connected to the camp God has called you to. And that's a paraphrase. In other words, your prosperity will go further. Oh, your prosperity, just like Ben, Joey, and Caleb, I got to be honest with you. They enjoy a lot of prosperity because of who they're connected to. You know, some preacher's kids are like, oh, my dad travels all the time. He's gone. My kids are glad dad's traveling. Because <laughs> I'm called to it. And they enjoy the benefits of that. I'm going to say it one more time. Your prosperity is connected to the company you run with that you're connected to when I uh, is this alright it's just, just a few minutes but this is a weighty matter I'm not trying to raise an offering I, I'm not trying to I'm just giving you an opportunity to connect to the anointing see the anointing is the weightier matter the money is the lesser matter that you can take carnal things and financial things and you can connect to the weightier matter called the anointing you can actually even connect to a promotion by way of giving. If you sow up, you go up. It's just the truth. If you sow up, what happens to you? Well, if you sow just at an equal level, if you sow down, and I'm not against helping the poor. Absolutely. You give to the poor, God will repay you. I'm looking, but I don't want to, I'm not expecting my anointing to be connected to those that are poor. <laughs> I'm sewing up. All right. When, um, it was 1993, uh, 32 years old, I grew up Church of God, Assembly of God. That was my lineage. That was my tribe, my dad and everything. And then just supernaturally, I got uh, grafted into Kenneth Copeland's vine in that camp, in that company. And all I can tell you is, you know, what was on them came on me to the highest level of my call. Do you understand? And I'm not just talking spiritual things. I'm talking natural things. I'm talking prosperous things. Now, can we talk just for a minute? And I'm going to cap this at about five minutes, if this is okay, Pastor. And, and just, I'm not afraid of this right here. Not afraid of it at all. listen this matters so somebody said well well you know, and i'm a very blessed man somebody said well of course you are because you work for kenneth copeland and he's probably given you a lot of money kenneth copeland personally has never given me a dollar he didn't have to i stayed close enough to him that what was on him connected to me by way of the anointing he didn't have to pull natural substance out of his pocket i was just smart enough and i'm really not that smart dear i, I had to go to summer school pre and post 12 12th grade you've heard of summer school before i had to do summer school after they let me walk the line by faith when they handed me a diploma, they called things which be not as though they were. They handed everybody else, you know, you shake hands with the principal and, and you move the tassel and they hand you the thing. There wasn't nothing in my thing that they hand me. Everybody else, everybody else got a photo and opened it that had a diploma. I just stood there closed. There was no diploma in it because I hated math. Are we same? same it's amazing how that works so I had to go so it's an ain't and that smart just one thing he did not have to give me anything personally or naturally but by way of just getting in close contact getting in close connection 
Well, somebody said, well, you fly on the jet with him. Yeah, well, yeah that's true, but you know, that's really not how the connection was made. It was made by two ways. I listened intensively to what he sowed into my heart by way of the word. And then I was constantly sowing financial things, which set something, it set it in motion. I sowed financially and I reaped the anointing. I sowed financially and I reaped the anointing. Are you listening to me? And you know, I've pastored two churches and the first one burned down, so I quit that one, and I moved on to a second one. I did not burn it down. I didn't. I thought about it. You know, I start telling these things, and, you know, we can see how far back we go, right? Hallelujah. And it wasn't the fire of the Holy Ghost. But So listen to me. So, again, this is important. Uh so then the second church uh, came into my heart and then brother Copeland I didn't, I, I didn't even know that he knew that I was going to start a church he was standing at the podium and he just does a little chuckle he goes huh concerning that church that you're called to raise and start up my hands upon it my hands upon you and then he spoke in tongues a little bit and he said the same thing that's on this ministry to a further degree is coming on you then he took two steps and he said, and it's not your final call. And then he walked away. Well, that's a mother load right there. What do I know? It's not my final call. It's for a season. So, some, you know, the church was blessed and all that. And someone would say, well, of course you were successful. Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Copeland did not give me a dollar ever for that church. He didn't have to. Because I took some dollars and sowed into what was on him, and what was on him came on the church. So you're believing for a breakthrough, pastors, with your church, and you're believing for increase numerically, financially, anointing, miracles, healings. Can I just see the hands of the pastors? You just, you know, does it ever just almost agitate you? You want healing anointing more and miracles more I got a little suggestion for you there's an anointing <laughs> in the room that you can sow natural things and you can reap of the anointing that's on this ministry not just for you personally and for your children yeah I've reaped all of that but you care about your church because you're a pastor do you understand what I'm saying? I'm talking about Pastor Nancy Dufresne. I'm trying, I'm getting ready to stop. Can I talk to just the younger ones in ministry? Stand up right now, Mr. Cool with the cool beard. Come here. Get behind him. There's two people. I got to do it right now before we receive an offering. Increase now. And the other was the tall, you. It was you. It was you, whatever you're called to do. Increase. So increase can be imparted by the laying on of hands. But yet, if there's not a God-given connection there, you're wasting your time. There's so many things. You'll hear Pastor Jay. You'll hear Pastor Debbie. You'll hear Pastor Nancy. All these ministers, you'll hear them say, Make sure you're in the right camp, company, tribe. Stay true to your spiritual father. Where's your spiritual diet? Who has your ear? What are you feeding on? Guys, they're not trying to control your life. This isn't the Nazism here. This isn't control tactics. This isn't like mind uh, brainwashing. They're trying to get... See, they have a glimpse of where they're going. Come here, brother, somebody that I just laid hands on. Run quick. No, the shorter one. I'll take him. Stay there. <laughs> I just want your beard. To... So what they're trying to do is they're trying to take you where they're going. Miracles, signs, wonders, Holy Ghost services, the glory of God, increase, advancement, See, they're trying to take you. 
they can't force you they can only give you the word and you can walk with them but okay just walk away from it. and so he's obviously stronger than me but the truth is even if and I'm not stronger than him even if I were I wouldn't have done this by God you're not leaving one way or another I wouldn't have done it is that you you okay this is important I say this because it involves the pastors and the ministers for almost an hour I talked to one of my dearest friends in ministry she affected me so much spiritually and in prayer and among other things she's in a, been in a season of prayer and then for the last uh, three days just shut herself in a room with other high level, level, level prayers holy God, spiritual children of brother Hagen she, among other things she said where there used to be connections but there were defections the Holy Ghost was gathering and there's a season of reconnection and when she said it oh my God it's like you know you get that on the inside for the ministers ministries where there were connections but there were defections the Holy Ghost said he had us pray about the gathering of the reconnections back to their true voice their true call their true tribe their true father now, that'll mean a lot to the, the all, all, it should mean something to everyone so here we need to receive an offering <laughs> I just said a lot but it matters it matters where you go to church dear God it matters that you go to church I love those of you that are watching by way of the internet right now and we're thrilled that you're tuning in. You need to be part of a local church. You need to be part of a local church. You need to be under a pastor. And when the Holy Ghost says go to a meeting, it may be a matter of life or death that you get in meetings. I'm going to say that one more time. It's critical and it's weighty that you listen to God and get in the meetings that he tells you to get into. Hallelujah. So this offering... We're sowing in. We're, guys, we're sowing up. We're sowing up. Pastor Nancy, my life, again, even though I have been with Brother Copeland, Jerry Savelle, and Jesse Duplantis, and other people, by the grace of God, for 30 years, over this last year, my life increased financially and in the healing anointing because of connecting to you. This is a weighty thing. Do you understand that? What is this? Good? It's helping us all get across the finish line. When you talked about needing help to get through the door, if I hadn't been at the piano, I would have pushed all of y'all out of the way. I'm determined, though there be many adversaries, there's a great door and an effectual door. I really don't care about the adversaries. I feel the pressure. I feel the pushback. Whatever. Just watch and weep because I'm crossing the threshold. You can stay on the other side if you want to, but I'm going all the way in. But I can't get there by myself. And the truth is nobody in the body of Christ can. You can't avoid divine connections. You can't ignore divine connections. You can strengthen that connection by sowing into it financially my life has increased financially because of whom I'm connected to and I know I'm not lighting it on fire right now but I'm just telling you the truth so let me give you some natural did, did, is that enough did everybody get what I was just trying to say it matters pastor it matters I gotta stop. I just look at you and I see more than I can say. Lord, we worship you right now. We worship you. Just everybody listen to the Holy Ghost right now. Lord, may this anointing have increased. I know about this anointing of increase. You've allowed me to taste of it for 30 years. 
you allowed me to walk in it to one that is called the apostle or the prophet of prosperity and you allowed me to get in very close proximity of it and with it and still connected to it and I am so thankful so thankful couldn't earn it didn't deserve it but just be faithful to it and don't ignore it don't disdain it don't lightly esteem it I got it Lord yes that's true magnify it hallelujah and so uh, <laughs> so if you're giving by check I want you to make the checks and this is primarily to those that are watching on the internet hey you that are watching by the internet so pastor they can go somewhere electronically right you that are watching by the internet go to the giving option and just there'll be a, a, a menu of options there and check the one that says guest minister check that one and all of it is going to Pastor Nancy Dufresne. And I'll tell you further where it's going after that. And then those of you that are part of this house, you make your check payable to Spirit of Faith Family Church. All right? I want everybody to give. I want everybody to give. Can I just, is there, hey, can we just be the family here for a second? Does anybody have, doesn't have something to give? Don't be embarrassed. Lift up your hand right now. I can change your life right now. I can change your, you can get a miracle. I'll put a miracle seed in your hand right now. I want, it, I want at least one person. See that hand right there? Go put some money in their hand. Go put some, and here's my suggestion. Put it in the offering. <laughs> you need it. That's the reason. You, if you need more, you got to sow. Anybody else? Some of these kids are lifting their hand. My God, put something in these children's hands. Hallelujah. This can I say the other part, Pastor? Uh, the Lord blessed Pastor Nancy with what is referred to as Amy Simple McPherson's castle. It was her vacation home. Now, her ministry is legendary, so used of God. Pastor Nancy has had that home for quite some time. That home is going to be renovated. This year, it has been given. <laughs> <laughs> this year that home will be renovated that home was built in 19 it was built from 1926 to 29 you know there might need to be a few alterations a few upgrades a few restorations hallelujah so pastor nancy has uh, not done this until this year but by the leading of the Holy Ghost all the offerings are going toward renovating that place I think there's more than just a house thing going on those of you that were in worship school know what I'm talking about you can tap into another man's ministry though they not be here hallelujah Hallelujah. Okay, I'm not going to say anymore. So all of this is going, you know, to that. So we praise God for that. Amen. So uh, again, if you're giving by check, just make it payable to Spirit of Faith Family Church. And if you're giving on the internet, simply look for the icon that says um, guest minister. It's in the chat section. Hallelujah. Put your hand on your offering right now. And uh, oh, Where's my singer? You were wearing a different color today. That's why I didn't see you. Come up here. Hallelujah. Father, thank you one more time for every seed that is sown. We call it multiplied. While they're walking up there, Pastor Nancy, I'm going to hand you this microphone. Just speak over the giving of the people. Father, I thank you. As you led Brother Hagen and you gave him the revelation and the light, we say... We claim all the money they need. We claim the money for their homes, for their businesses, for their churches. And we say, Satan, you take your hands off their money in Jesus' name. Angels, you go. You cause the money to come. You cause the homes to come, the businesses to come, the buildings to come, the furnishings to come, the equipment to come. Everything that's in their heart, we thank you that we have divine angelic help participating in the harvest of this seed and we praise you for it and we thank you for it and we receive it in jesus name 
Hallelujah. Are you in G? Okay, great. Hallelujah. We'll just take off and I'm going to follow you. Okay? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, the Lord is good. Amen. He is so good to us. He's a mighty God. He's a holy God. He's worthy, worthy to be praised. And it's wonderful to know that He is good. How many of us can say He's good? Hallelujah. But it's also wonderful to know that He's good to us. He is good to us. Say, the Lord is good to me. The Lord is good to me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Oh, we like that surely. Surely. Hallelujah. That means there's no doubt. That means it can't change. Hallelujah. So we stay in that place to receive of that goodness. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I am held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will see of the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been faithful Oh yes you have All my life you have been so so good With every breath that I am able Oh I will sing of the goodness
For the Lord is good, and His mercy endures forever. <laughs> now you have to see that. How come, what makes Him good? His mercy. They're not two separate things. He's good because of His mercy. Amen. And I, I can't tell you how many times I have said, thank you so much for your mercy. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. With every breath that I have I will see of the goodness of God. No matter what comes against you, the goodness that's for you is far greater. Belittle what's against you and magnify what's for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, we worship you, Father. We glorify. We glorify. We glorify. You know. I've heard your pastor make this statement. I don't know if it's original with him or if he heard it somewhere else, but I'll credit it him as original and I'm going to take it to me as it's original with me. <laughs> and he would make this statement, God planned it, Jesus purchased it, and the Spirit leads us into it. In following the Word and the Spirit, learning to how to follow the Holy Ghost. We have to so that we can move into all that was planned and purchased. It's not enough that it's planned or enough that it's purchased. We need to go on to the possessing of it and the Spirit of God helps us to move into what's been ours all along. He takes of the things of God and reveals them to us. And without His revealing, we'll never be a, a participant of what's been planned and purchased. Amen. So thank God for the Holy Ghost. You can be seated. I'm going to tag on a little bit. I, I get up here with no notes. I have, an, I have a folder, but I don't know that it's going to get opened. <laughs> but tagging on to what David talked about and what Pastor Jay this morning was so, so rich. Yes. Talking about rightly connected. In the right connection is going to be supply for every arena. Yes. Every arena. Yes. Yes. And uh, in that is right doctrine. Yes. Right doctrine. Because right before I came up, 
this just came up. And that is be very careful of just clicking on anyone yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. that comes up in your suggested yes. 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 Amen. column. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. I, uh, because things can sound right, right. without being right. That's right. That's Amen. right. Amen. You know how in Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas, God sent them to that region, assigned by heaven to be there. And as they're there, a little girl with a spirit of divination, a wrong spirit, you understand? A wrong spirit followed them and said these words, these are servants of the Most High God who show unto us the way of salvation. Absolutely no, no error in those words. It's exactly right. The only problem was the source. There was an evil spirit behind the right words. So you start clicking on things because this is particular to our age. We can do this decades ago, right? You had to purposefully go somewhere. Now you don't. Wrong things will purposefully come to you. And you don't just click on it because something can sound right but be wrong. And when Paul heard her, these are servants of the Most High God who show unto us the way of salvation. It sounds like she is helping announce to gather people. And no doubt, people didn't find anything wrong with that, but Paul being grieved. Here, you go by what's in you, not by what you hear. Paul being grieved. She, this she did many days, many days. And you say, well, did it take Paul that long to perceive it? No, it took time for it to be revealed. The anointing to come on him to deal with that. Yeah, there was an evil spirit That's saying right. that. That's right. Yeah. Devils will adopt right words just to get an entrance. Wow. Amen. That's good. They will sound like they ought to sound. The word talks about how demons will disguise as angels of light. Why? Because Satan knows what the Holy Ghost sounds like. He was once in proximity of working with the Godhead. He knows how to sound the closest yeah. Come on. so that you'll swallow something. Right. 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 Don't think the devil wants recognition. He doesn't. No. He wants you totally oblivious yeah. to who's behind it right. so that he can work unhindered. Yeah. There are many voices out there that sound, they have like words but they come from wrong places do not just click on what's popular because sometimes in taking in you take those words in and believe them and you'll take in a spirit with it a wrong spirit an evil spirit because you accepted the words. Luke chapter 4. The Spirit of God, Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. Not to go in and see if he could do it. Who's going to win? No, he went in full and came out full. He went in there to demonstrate victory. Yes. He didn't go in there to see who was going to 
come out on top. He was victor before he went in, victor during it, and came out full. Came out full. But while he was there, there were words spoken to him during those temptations. Words found in the Bible. Exact words. Quoting scripture exactly. But the source was Satan himself. So just because right words sound right, don't go by words. Go by the Holy Ghost within you. And don't be gullible and don't have a vague idea. Let me say a misdefined definition of love. Right. Well, you know, we need to be accepting of our brothers. Make sure you're not accepting a wrong spirit. Walking in love will not turn you gullible. It will not make you susceptible and unperceiving. It's not walk, it's not a step outside of love to recognize that's a wrong spirit. Love the person, but that's a wrong, that came from a wrong place. Therefore, I turn it off. And that is love. Because love flows more than one direction. Love is not just this way. From me to you. From you to others. It is also this way. From me to God. And I will not, if I could say this, violate him to fulfill something this direction. Because to walk in love with him will never violate this direction. That's right. That's right. Amen. <laughs> so Jesus in that wilderness, he recognized the word used wrongly. And he always brought it back out of error, a misuse of the word. There are This is a strategy that the devil will always use. He used it with Jesus. He's always going to use this. Words that sound like what God would say or what the Spirit would say, but it doesn't land right in here. Do not overstep your spirit thinking you're walking in love with somebody to accept them. You have to know this. Love does not equal acceptance. That's not what love means. Love doesn't mean acceptance. No. I don't have to agree with you to love you. Jesus died for us when we were yet sinners. God did not accept us as sinners. He did not agree with us as sinners, yet he loved us and did something in our behalf, but he could not accept us into his fellowship until he dealt with what was wrong about us. Love does not mean I blindly accept. Well, if I'm walking in love, I have to agree. That's not true. God doesn't, God's never agreed with sin, will never agree with sin, though he loves the people who sin. So do not think that, well, I'm just, you know, I'm just hungry for, I'm just hungry, I'm just hungry. You better be uh, aware here. Because as a baby Christian, I could tell that sounds good, but mm, that doesn't fit. I didn't hear a voice. I didn't hear some spectacular dealing. I just, it doesn't fit. It doesn't soothe in here. And... uh, I would not say this without the Holy Ghost saying it. Quit clicking on those who are not your connection. I am not saying they're bad or wrong or they're 
from a wrong place. I'm not saying that. There are some that are that. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. But just because they're available doesn't mean they, they're yours. Yeah. I'm not preaching division in the body of Christ. I'm saying know your fit, know your place. Yeah. Where do you fit? Yeah. That skill in following the Holy Ghost and he will lead you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Where you fit. And the reason he's leading you there is because that's where he wants you to feed. Amen. He doesn't want you just feeding yeah. anywhere. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because those that God has fit you with, you fitly join together. The anointing on them will nurture you in a way that nobody else's anointing will nurture you. And people say, well, I can pick up and leave my church. There's many churches down the road, yes, but they're not anointed for your life, although they may preach a great word. It's not about who preaches a good word. It's where do you fit? And there have been so many people's lives who have been taken off course because of a loose finger clicking. And I'm not just talking about watching preachers, but anything, click, 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 click. click. But the devil will use that to also insert somebody, I've never heard of them before. Oh, I'm going to listen to them. Why? Why? Because where God's connected you, you've heard of. God said something to me because when we, of course, going on daily television with, on Brother Copeland's channel, Victory Channel, and then now God's opened other avenues for us, we're getting lots and lots of invitations, and I so appreciate that. Yes. Listen, I want too many than too few. <laughs> and we're getting them from other countries, lots of them from other countries. And I said... God, I said, uh, I, I, I always pray and go by here, my spirit. And I said, I want to make sure, in the, because this is a, um, a more opportunities than I've been presented before. My husband and I have always had always a full schedule. But this is, I mean, we're, we've got many, many, many scores and scores I'll never get to. And uh, I said to know which ones when I don't know the people. I said, I'm just telling you it's a little bit, ha, ha, ha. Because I know how, how important accuracy is of where you go. I don't have time to miss it. I just don't have time. I don't have time. <laughs> if I were to show you my schedule, I don't have time. I don't have time to go to the wrong place. And uh, I said, it, it's really important to me that I be accurate in this. And I, I just, it's just a lot. Yes. And uh, he said this to me. He said, I will never send you to a random place. It won't be someone you've never heard of. It won't be something that's never been connected to you. He says, before I want to send you somewhere that you've never been before, I will put a divine connection in place there. And through that divine connection, you'll recognize where I'm sending you. In other words, I'm not just going to just close my eyes and go. There will be definite things put in place for accuracy. Amen. He's done that for you. Amen. He's telling me, I won't just send you without direction. There will already be something in place that you can be assured that this is where you should go. That means he's not going to show it to you just randomly. Where he connects you, you will know in your spirit, and then you're done. Just click, 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 click. Watching this preacher, listen to that preacher. Because... Sometimes, even precious ministers who have valid ministries, I value every minister that God has raised up. I value every ministry that God has raised up. But if they're not my connection, 
there's going to be a seasoning on their feeding that can not, it can taint the clarity that God has for me from my divine connection. When I am rightly connected, there is a clear flow. It's not cloudy. It's not muddy. There's clarity. When I walk out of a service like that, everything came clear. Things, answers came. Things showed up for me just by being in proximity of them. And when you drink from a place that is not your supply, clarity will be lost. Yes. Amen. Clarity will be lost. That's right. Amen. That's good, Pastor. Um, we've seen people start getting an appetite in their ministry for something God didn't tell them to do because they got around people who had that in their ministry. That's lack of clarity. And it is so important for you to recognize that someone can be a fine preacher, but who are they feeding on? Because I have had people say, send me something. You need to watch this preacher. And their words are like my flow. But I know where they feed on. And it's not my flow. And there will be a tainting that comes from their feeding through their right words, right sounding words. That will take away clarity from me if I if I swallow that. Praise the Lord. I turned on there years ago. There was, as I said, some things become popular. Winds of doctrine become popular, and winds aren't always. It doesn't say erroneous winds. They're just winds. They, just should, they should just keep blowing. Uh-huh. Blow on past. Yeah. Yeah. Blow on past. Instead yeah. of you stand out and say, I take it all. Yeah. No, just let it go. Yeah. Just let it go. And some, I had never heard of a certain person, but it was, they had become very popular. And uh, this was years ago. Ed was still alive. And they came up, and I'm just clicking across television. They came up on a Christian network. And I go, oh, I've heard that name mentioned. And I go, hmm. And they're quoting people I know. Uh-huh. Yep, 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 yep. Don't be gullible. Right. I'm just saying, yeah. that's not yeah. walking yeah. in love. Yeah. And they were saying like words, but I mean, there was on the inside, I mean, rare, rare, rare. And brother, I got off that as fast as I could because it only takes one statement to lodge in you. Yeah. One wrong flow to lodge in you that will taint things that took God years to plant in you. I don't play with it. I don't play with it. I don't play with it. Um, whenever with my husband, there, there was one of the things when one of the things when, when his plane went down, it went down in a rural area. I was so thankful that it didn't do more damage to some homes or other people, right? Um, but it landed in a soybean field. They couldn't just clean up the parts of the plane. They couldn't just clean up the debris. A big chunk of the insurance money went to, they had to get earth digging machines and go way down to get every trace of fuel, of oil out because even though it wouldn't be visible to the eye, to the eye there's traces right. that, that those plants 
would draw on what's in that soil and there's toxic things now in that soil. Nobody would see it. Looks like a soybean, grows like a soybean. And a farmer's eye would go, that's a soybean plant. But there's something that got in. And the cleanup was expensive. It only takes one wrong statement. And the cleanup would have to be extensive. One of the things that God does for us when we know where to connect, now we know where to eat. Amen. Now we know where to eat. Yes, ma'am. And I have taught our congregation over the years, we have what we call book of the month. And we have our congregation, this is what we're reading this month. Why? Unity. We're feeding the same diet. I don't want you bringing in somebody something and passing it out to other congregation members because you like this book. There's a, in the bookstore is everything that I approve. And once you've read all that and mastered all that, then we'll talk about something else that you might know about. But until this is skilled and part of your everyday life, you don't have time for outside resources that are outside the voice God's put in your life. And being hooked up to Dad Hagen, then I knew what to feed on. I fed on his materials, but also I fed on who fed him. Everything like that. Why? So that we can come and be united in our flow. And we're not just saying, and people saying, well, I'm just hungry. You can eat, you can eat food that will mess up your system just because you're hungry. Hunger is not a qualification for whether you should eat it or not. Amen. Dad Hagen would say this to us. He would warn us. Be careful who you follow. Yes. Yes. Because you start following someone uh-huh. and the things that happen to them will start happening to you. That's right. Amen. Amen. Be careful. Yes. Because all the devil needs to do is sow one thing. You know what Jesus said? He said, Satan came, but he found nothing in me. He had, Satan tried to plant things in Jesus through those around him, through opposition, through persecution. He didn't necessarily try to do it himself. He just used everything around his daily life to try to plant something in him. And Jesus said, Satan came but found nothing of what he tried to sow in me. What's that mean? No entrance. You got no entrance because I didn't take anything that you offered, even if it looked beautiful or sounded pleasing. You always follow your spirit. You always don't just follow people who are excited about somebody. And then they say, you need to read this. Well, do you? And a lot of times people who feed on a lot, a lot of here and there, here and there, it's because they don't know where to be. They don't know who their divine connection is. And they're just out just taking a bit of everything. And I'm just saying there are, there are those who they sound right. And I'm not saying they're not right hearted, but they're not your feeding place. Because they don't have the same approach and view on some things and it's not always obvious it's sometimes that underlying tainting of the soil yes 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 that's good amen amen amen, amen. 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 praise the lord praise the lord i didn't intend i, I didn't know i was going to say any of this but we can't be gullible and say well i'm walking in love i don't offer my diet up to nobody nobody god directs mine god directs mine I don't just let relatives hand me their favorite book. Mm. Mm. 
when you have clarity of where you need to feed, yes. then you have clarity of what to feed on. And I don't need to feed like those who don't know. Yes. Like those who don't know where they fit. Right. Yes. Praise the Lord. Um, I want us to go. Let's go to Ephesians. <clears throat> Ephesians um, chapter 4. We'll go ahead and start back at verse 11. But he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for their perfecting. It was so good what Pastor Jay brought out today about this. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect a perfect man under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Therefore, uh, that we be, that we henceforth be no more children. All right. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Amen. What's that mean? Don't be unde underdeveloped. Yes. Yes. Undeveloped. Yes. We all go through that process, but don't stay Amen. young yes. spiritually. Amen. That that we henceforth be no more children. Look at this. What happens? To children tossed tossed anything that comes up can move them around tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine what's that mean what, what, what's popular what's popular what, what, what children swallow carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to what deceive 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 the problem with deceive, someone who's deceived, they don't know they're deceived. That's it. Right. Amen. Amen. They don't know they're deceived. Yes, Verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Look at verse 15 again. But speaking the truth in love. In love. Notice he was talking about some men, you're not carried about by the slight of men, uh -huh. cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Why? Because their motives are off. Oh. So they're twisted. Oh. Their motives are wrong, so they'll do things to cover the motive. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Yep. 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 Sometimes it's money motivated. Sometimes yep. it's just stardom motivated. Oh. Sometimes the motive is, I want the biggest church in town. Come on. Listen, we want to reach people, but your motive can't be that I be the biggest. That's a distorted motive. But speaking the truth, look at this, in love. What does this mean? Your, pure, your motives are purified by love. Love purifies the motive of why you're speaking to people, why you're preaching. Yes. If you're not doing it so you can uh, uh, improve your self-esteem. Right. Yeah. Pastors, never connect your self-worth. Yeah. Never connect the value of your office to how many showed up <laughs> to hear you. Because you're putting, you're connecting to something shifting. Amen. Shifting. Yeah. The leading preacher of the day, John the Baptist, one day they all left him. Yeah. Then the next leading preacher of the day, they all left him, called Jesus. He preached one sermon they didn't understand, didn't like. Eat my flesh, drink my blood. If you don't, you got no part of me. And then they all left him that day. And I love what Jesus said. Turns around, there's 12 left. The rest of you can go now if you want to also. Let's clean it all out. Yeah. Yeah. People who'd received miracles, people who'd received, yeah. Yeah. picked yeah. up and left one day. Yeah. Jesus did not connect his obedience to God to who stayed and who left. He didn't care who stayed and who left. That's been a help for me pastoring. You know, 
my club. Yes. <laughs> founder, founder, president, and charter member. I don't give a Royal Rip Club. Meaning this, I don't let people, I don't let what people think define whether or not my heart is satisfied. I let him. I want him pleased. I love people. I, it's one of the greatest honors to minister to people, but I'm not going to let people make me question his role in my life and his call upon my life. I'm not going to question whether I should be doing something or not based on who showed up Sunday or who didn't show up. I'm not going to walk out there and say I'm done pastoring. You're, you're connected to the wrong thing. You're bringing your self-worth and your success, what you're calling success, connected to uh, chair sitters. <laughs> Don't do that. You're worth more than that. Your call and the plan of God came from a higher place than who's there and who's not there. But some people, their motive is who's there. And they will dilute the word dilute the flow of the spirit to get their motive satisfied they will that's right I don't I normally you know I'm nicer than this normally but <laughs> I don't mind being frank because that's the only way you keep people off dangerous territory but this is the Holy Ghost Yes. I'm telling you, this is the Holy Ghost. He told me Amen. this direction to go. Yes. And uh, <laughs> Morgan was so funny because I don't preach in our church that often because I'm not there that often. And so she was saying, we need to get you in the church. You know, like on a Sunday morning. And she said, just know when you come, don't bring studio Nancy. <laughs> We want Pastor Nance, yeah. meaning we want to hear yeah. Yeah. frankness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In other words, they've been trying to take it. Yeah. They've been trying to take it. <laughs> so here he said in verse 15, but speaking the truth in love, love has cleaned up your motive. Amen. Amen. Love has defined your motive. Yes, yes, yes. Love has purified your motive. Amen. Yeah. You're not just trying to do something to gather people to yourself. Because your motive is the person you're ministering yeah. to. Not your own self-worth being yeah. fortified. Amen. 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 Look at this. But speaking the truth, look at this, in love. If it's not in love... If it's not the right motive, if it's the wrong spirit coloring it, it's no longer the truth. Even if it's like words. It's no longer the truth. It no longer represents the truth. And um, be very careful. Be very careful who you listen to. Who you decide to make a habit of feeding on. Because the devil will try to infiltrate your faith. Not always through words, but through spirits behind words. Amen. Dad Hagen would warn us. There were a few times in the back room. One thing Dad Hagen never did. He never called names publicly. Never. But there were a few times in the back room to those he was speaking into in a very strong way, he'd say, watch that minister. Watch that minister. They're money motivated. I'm talking about years ago. I'm not talking about current. People he warned us about are not even here on the earth. But he would, he would name them. And he said, there's power demonstrated. There's things demonstrated, but something else is motivating yes. them. Amen. Amen. And he would warn us. Yes. And others would flock. And people put on television. Yeah. 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 
and passed off as powerful just because something dramatic it's things are stated in a dramatic way doesn't mean they're coming from a safe place I'm just telling you these are sober times you say well why is it because you know what has really made life more sober the ease of communication the ease of communication hundred years ago you had to on purpose go to the wrong place now it comes to you when nobody knows what you're watching it's right here at your fingertips this is what makes perception and purity so critical because now we're to live lives because there are people who have lived um, compromised lives and no one knew it and how much easier that is today than ever before and I don't care how strong a word may seem Uh I don't care how bold they may be, how popular something may be, and how many miracles you may see. If something doesn't land right here, this is always right. This is always right. And don't just accept something because you know people who did accept it. I follow my own spirit. I'm not following yours. I'm not following your spirit. I'm following my spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord because it's very sly. It's very sly. It's very sly. Um, Let me go to another scripture, but I need to find where it is. Go with me. First Timothy. <clears throat> First Timothy chapter one and look at verse eighteen. This is a father, a spiritual father speaking to a spiritual son. Paul's writing to Timothy in verse 18, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that by them, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. What's a good warfare? One that works. Right. One that succeeds. Yes. One that produces. Yes. Verse 19. How are you going to hold war good warfare? Who's the warfare against? Opposition. Not with God. You don't have that. It's with opposition. How are you going to be skillful in the face of opposition? He's telling you, verse 19, holding faith and a good conscience. What's, the, what's your conscience? The voice of your spirit. Don't override the voice of your spirit. Don't override the voice of your spirit or you will not war good warfare. Faith alone will not war good warfare if you're going to overstep how the spirit's leading you. You can build your faith, build your faith, feed your faith, act on faith, but if you're overriding how the spirit has been leading you, your faith cannot cover for that. It's not designed to. So holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck, of whom is Hymenius and Alexander. I love, he he named some things. He did name some people. Why? Because evident, he didn't have to, he didn't have to introduce Timothy to these men. Timothy knew them. He said, just know that these men whom I have delivered unto Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme. Um, Go with me, same passage, but if you have the Amplified, maybe you can pull that up, the Amplified Classic. 
verse 19, holding fast to faith, that leaning of the entire personality on God. We, we see this word personality and we just think the coloring of somebody's temperament and their community. Let, let, let's read it this way. The leaning of the entire person. Person, yeah. <coughs> Which would include your personality, but it's more than just your personality, your good manners or how you portray yourself with your personality, but the leaning of the entire person. I lean on God with everything so that I stay on the right flow. He said, um, leaning of the entire human person on God. In, in, look at this. In absolute trust and confidence and having a good, clear conscience. Yeah. By rejecting and thrusting from them their conscience, some individuals have made shipwreck of their faith. So faith cannot work for you when you're overriding your conscience. In fact, you step over your conscience and, and, you, and you wreck your faith. You wreck it. Wreck it. It goes nowhere. What's this mean? You follow the word. How many of you know the word is faith food? And you follow the spirit. Follow your spirit so you don't end up shipwrecked. Shipwrecked. Yes. Dad Hagen talk, talked to us about, and he called the name of a man who the world accepted as a prophet. I don't know if he's still alive or not. I don't know. Why? Because I don't follow him. Right. Yeah. He said he came in and demanded that I put my stamp approval on him as a prophet. Mm -hmm. And I told him I wouldn't because he wasn't, he wasn't safe. Right. I don't care if they're called. If they're not yeah. safe, the Amen. call doesn't make them safe. Amen. Amen. It's their motive and their how they... Yes. 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 <coughs> Just because someone's called doesn't mean they're safe. Yes. And I'm not against preachers, but I'm saying this is part of why you're rightly connected because you have help yes. in, in hearing some of these things. But Brother Hagen, <coughs> excuse me, stood and he called this man's name to us. And he said he demanded <coughs> that I public... Yeah, give me that. That I publicly endorse him as a prophet. He said, when I told him I would not, he said, he stood in my office and cussed me out with every word you could think of. People would have no, not, no way of knowing that through what was preached. But the Holy Ghost knows. The Holy Ghost knows who's safe for you. <clears throat> and I appreciate that Paul called. Yes. Mm -hmm. He called names. Yes. Why? Because some people had worked them their way into a very influential position. Yes. Right. The right. devil will put yep. people without right motives yep. in very influential positions. Be aware. Amen. The Holy Ghost will make you aware. Yes. Amen. On the inside here, if it doesn't, just pay attention. Yes, yes. Pay attention. Yes, yes, I am so sober. I do, not, I do not do courtesy bookings in my church. Amen. I don't do it. Amen. Dad Hagen taught us this. Every person you have in your pulpit yes. will make a deposit, yes. good or bad, right. into that church, yes. into those people. Yes. I sat, I saw my husband. I, you haven't heard me preach on the, the, some of these things. You, I, this is the Holy Ghost. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> there was somebody that was very popular on television and preachers were lining up trying to get this person in their church and someone that had Ed in and they were not, they, they were somebody that Ed had known for years but there wasn't necessarily a, a close fellowship. But... Uh, they had a they had a nice size a nice sized church had been there for years, and they had Ed in, and they said to Ed, "I'm fixing to have such and such prophet in," and I think they were trying to show Ed we were able to secure this well known, and they were glad, and they were kind of letting Ed know, and Ed said, "Everywhere he goes." Everywhere he goes, the fruit of his ministry is this. The marriage falls apart of the pastor. 
or someone loses their mind. He had him. He had him. And within two weeks, they put his son, the pastor had to put his son in a mental institution. And within a short time after that, the pastor and his wife got a divorce and he ended up dying. The church scattered because one person made a deposit. Wouldn't listen. Wouldn't listen. Because he was popular. And they tried to build their church off of po- the, the yep. popular people yep. that can draw yep. crowds. Yep. Uh-huh. Yes, Come on. What is that? A motive is not to, what am I bringing to my people? Yeah. The motive is I want to get people. If a pastor's motive gets distorted, yep. he, will, he will allow things in on his congregation. Yeah. <clears throat> we sat around a dinner table with Dad Hagen. And um, there were maybe six or eight of us at the table. And <clears throat> Brother Hagen had come to a certain state and held a meeting. And a pastor got up in his pulpit and told his congregation, do not go to that meeting. Well, you can imagine, you just let people know something's going on over there and people want to know, they go. So this, a certain pastor that knew that this pastor had said, don't go to Brother Hagin's meetings. They said, because he didn't just say it to the, in the back room in privacy, he said it publicly. It does matter the location of where something is said. It doesn't matter. And so this pastor asked Brother Hagen, what will happen to that pastor? Because he did that. Brother Hagen said this, well, he said he's not, nothing's going to happen to him because he, he's against me personally. But he's, a, he's not just attacking me personally, he's attacking the message. There's the sin. He's sinning against the message. There's the danger. He said, it's not me. It's the message. He doesn't like my message. And he said, he's sinning against the message. And Brother Hagin said, you watch. He will get sick. And then that that sickness will run through his whole congregation. So it does matter who you sit under. Amen. When someone is like that and you hear that, <clears throat> if you were in that congregation, the Holy Ghost would alert you, leave this setting. Leave. Don't be here. Why? Because there's a harvest on those words that that pastor just said. And you don't want to be around the harvest. And your, your spirit will protect you. It'll lead you away from things. Well, praise the Lord. We could go on and on and on. But what I'm saying to you is this. When God connects you somewhere, it's because he wants you to feed there. Amen. Keep your... Um, <clears throat> growing up, um, mother cooked every day. That's, that's just the flow of everyday life. Some of us grew up with that. I know this current generation, it's a little bit more diverse than that. But mother cooked every day. There was no such thing as mother cooked and you decided not to show up. There was no such animal. There was no such animal. Because it took her time. It's an honor issue. It's an honor that someone's prepared and you decided that you would dismiss that. You didn't just drive up and down the road and say, well, look at all the homes on this road. They're all eating supper tonight. I think I'll just go into this home. No, you you don't fit there. You don't belong there. You're not a member of that household. They haven't prepared a, 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 a plate for you at the table. It's not your eating place. 
And you know what we did? We went back to the same house, the same table, all my growing up years because we knew where to eat because we knew where we belonged. How hard is that? None of you find that hard. And it's not hard spiritually either. It's not hard. Amen. When you know where you fit, now you know where you feed. Amen. Very simple. And if someone's popular, but you don't hear your pastor refer to them, then you know your pastor doesn't feed on them. If your pastor endorses someone, say, hey, if he feeds him, then that'll feed me. Pay attention to who he does refer to. But I don't let just anyone in my pulpit because even if they don't preach anything wrong, they're selling their books and tapes to my congregation. They take it home and feed on it. It matters to me. Not only that, I have a ministerial organization that if they see me accept, many times somebody will just let down their guard and say, well, it's good for Pastor Nancy, it's good for me. And they, then you've multiplied one choice. You say, well, I'm not a pastor. No, but you are a parent. And where you take your life is where you're taking the life of your children and your grandchildren. And you're planting things in them through what you're eating. Same thing. Same thing. It's just as important. Amen. So pastors, I encourage you, don't just have somebody because they want to they preach. Don't just have somebody because they're popular and well-known. I'm not against someone popular and well-known. God raises up people. I understand that. But uh, just know what they feed before you decide to eat. Amen. And if you're, if you're a young Christian, if you don't hear your pastor refer to it, stay away from it. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. There's tainting that can happen on the food that you don't even recognize is in the food. You know what you know what some countries have? Food testers. Around the president? Around a king? Somebody gonna eat it first. That's right. And they're gonna be a living sacrifice that becomes a dying sacrifice if there's a trace of poison that is not perceptible to the taste. We're going to watch and see how it affects them uh, before yeah. I eat it. That's right. Pay attention Amen. to how churches are affected and things are affected before you start eating it. Amen. 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 But know this, the devil will fight your mind to keep you away from divine connections. He will fight you. He'll try to feed it like they're the wrong. Oh, don't you do that. Don't you do that. Listen, I've been there. I've been there. When God wants me divinely connected, I guarantee you the devil does a dog pile on my head. But I've learned, oh, (laughs) there's something connected with this. Amen. I go by here. I don't go by here because the devil will try to dupe you and say, you know, that pastor, you know, he, 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 I didn't like what he preached Sunday. I'm leaving. Uh, You better make sure it's not your touchiness uh, removing you because sometimes you go, he's very frank. That's exactly what I need. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Long way to say where you're connected is where you feed period. Because it does matter. It only takes one meal to mess up a system. I saw a thing, a report, some kind of a news report. And a boy had taken, you know, kids will get together and they'll dare each other. (laughs) And... um, these teenagers, they were like 17, 18, got together, and there was some kind of a bug. And they dared one of the kids to eat it, and he did. And there was something poisonous in that bug that that boy, with that one bite, is his brain shut down, and he is a full-blown uh, cripple from the top of his head to the soles of his feet and has lived in a, in a brain-dead state and his body unable to move, paralyzed, for years now. Because he ate one thing. thing. If that will do that physically, what do you think that 
wrong food will do for your spiritual life. I'm not trying to frighten people. I'm saying these, are, these, these, mat these matters matter. These things matter. Don't be mindless. Because the devil's not mindless about his strategy and device. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Stand with me. Praise the Lord. We worship you, Father. <clears throat> we, this has been Divine Connection Day, hasn't it? <laughs> with the morning service, with Brother David's offering. What's, what the Holy Ghost is trying to get something across, right? And we're not, we're not hard to... It, that's how important it is when he says it over and over and over. Praise the Lord. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Father. Jesus had to tell his own disciples. He said, beware the leaven of the Pharisees. Beware. He called it out. He called it out. Jesus was faced with religious leaders and he'd call them, you whitewashed sepulchers full of dead men's bones. I mean, why? They're deadly. They're deadly. Deadly. We don't... You say, who did he do that to? To hypocrites. Who's hypocrites? People with wrong motives. They pretend one thing, but their intent is another. Jesus protected those that he taught. And this is part of it. It's appropriate. It's to protect. It's not to make people look bad, but we can't, we can't live mindless because the devil would love to weaken you, take you off course just through error. Not through backsliding. Because some of us are so, we're not going to backslide. But error can, uh, can undo the, the, the credibility of a ministry. Amen. Father, we thank you for that divine help. So, so grateful. So, so grateful. Appreciative. Appreciative. And sometimes it's not even that someone has anything wrong. They're just not your they're just not your feeding place. They're just not your feeding place. And uh, that's why when ministers come to our church, they say, utterance flows so easy here. It is so easy to preach here. Why is that? Clarity. Clarity of the diet. Clarity of the diet. We're not mingling all kinds of flows in. The flow is clear. And they step into it, and what can happen, they can come up to their high, a higher place in their own office and how they function in that service because of the clarity. We've kept it clear on purpose. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I'm saying that because there's some pastors here that you need to address that. You need to address that. You need to clean up the diet. The diet of what you're feeding on and the diet you're feeding yes. your congregation and who you're having in your pulpits. You, you need to clean that up. And, and look to the Holy Ghost to help you clean up the toxins, so to speak. Because he'll do that. He'll, he'll help you. Amen. Don't do courtesy bookings. Don't turn your pulpit over to someone lightly because something's being sown every time someone gets in your pulpit. Some of you need to quit letting some family members preach because they're not for the message that God's put in you. And they're try they'll introduce something that God doesn't have you to introduce. And know this, God's not directing your church through your family. He's directing it through the vision he gave to the pastor. And you don't sit around a table and ask the staff what the vision is for the church. You don't do it. You don't do it. The vision comes to the man in authority from God. Period. 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 And I'm, I'm not just maybe pastors here, but pastors watching. Clean it up. Clean up the flow. Clean up the flow. Amen. Amen. How am I going to do that, Pastor Nancy? Pay attention to your spirit. Pay attention to your spirit. Quit just booking friends. If they're not going to feed into the clarity of the flow. Well, I've had them in for years. That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean anything. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus.
We're thankful, Father. We're thankful. We're thankful. And you know, in the middle of that, the healing anointing came. Why? That didn't hurt, that didn't hurt the, the feelings of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We worship you, Father. Somebody's neck is being healed right now. Move that around. Somebody's neck is being healed. You did not have full mobility. You had limited mobility with that neck. Just move it around. Are we checking it to see if it worked? No, we're giving action to that anointing. We're giving action. Their shoulder's being healed. So right where you're at, move that shoulder around. Move it around. You say, well, I'm a little embarrassed. Why? Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody's pelvis, there's been misalignment in the pelvis. I don't know if there was an injury that caused it or what, but you could, it, it, it affected, of course, your hip movement. But that's being corrected right now. We thank you for that, Father. We thank you for it. There's some kind of infection that has gone down the throat. That's being healed right now. That's being healed right now. And those who are watching by live stream or watching this later, you can receive it too. Just release your faith. Release your faith. We praise you, Father. There's jaws that are being healed right now. Teeth that are being healed, especially back teeth. Being healed right now. Something connected the ear, nose, throat. You've been to ear, nose, and throat doctors for years. Well, uh, that's being addressed right now. That is being healed right now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, somebody with that, I don't, I don't, when I, when I called out the jaw and the teeth, there's something also in the hinging of that jaw. That's being corrected now. You would, it would pop. It would seemingly, it could be, it almost popped out of place very easily. If you'll move that around right now, you'll recognize that doesn't pop like it did. It's, it's positioned as it ought to be. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We glorify you. There's eyes being healed. Eyes you, are being thank healed. You, Lord Jesus. Thank Praise you, Jesus. No more headaches. No more headaches. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Father. Some kind of scalp condition is being healed right now. A scalp condition is being healed. You've had that problem off and on for years. It's not just one recent outbreak of it. It's been a recurring thing that's being healed right now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The power of God, the fire of God is just going along, just along the top of your shoulders from one side to the next. You can sense that. The power of God making that area of your body right. Hallelujah. We thank you for it, Father. Uh, Pastor Becky, I don't know what this is. Something on your internal organs. I don't know if there's, there's something being corrected. I, it seems to me something that is not sitting as it should. And that's being corrected right now. Just reach up your hands and receive that. An angel is working on that. We thank you for... Uh, we thank you for that, Father. We thank you for that divine adjustment and correction. And it's going, to, it's going to address some things for you. We thank you for it. We, th we thank you for it, Father. We thank you for it, Father. I don't know whether it seems like more in the female organ area. I don't, I don't know. Something. You know, I, I, I remember Ed would call me out and he'd say, I seen an angel working on your female organs. I didn't know it till later. But I would have never been able to have children easily easily i wouldn't have been able to get pregnant and every time it would say i see an angel working on right after that i'd get pregnant and i didn't know that something was amiss but god knew god knew amen praise the lord praise the lord we thank so it does matter that you're rightly connected <laughs> For things to be produced, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I remember the first date my husband and I had. I was down in Texas 
and he flew down to take me out. He, he was living in Tulsa. I was living in Tulsa at the time. But I was in Texas for a short time, and he flew down to take me out on a date. And uh, that day we had gone to a, a, a dinner, went to a movie with my sister and her husband. And we were standing on her back patio. And she lived in like a more rural community and you could see acres behind her house. There were no other homes behind her house and just a, a vast uh, sweeping view behind her house. And Ed walked up and put his hand on my back and said, what's, what's the matter with your back? And I said, I don't know, but when I was in Miss Oklahoma, I had severe issues with it. And he said, well, did you know that you were destined to be in a wheelchair within 10 years? And I said, no, didn't quite know that. <laughs> So it does matter. If I would have married wrong, that would not have been intercepted. Never been on a date like that before or since. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We worship you. But I tell you what it did. It ruined me for any other date. If you can't, if you can't do that. <laughs> right? <laughs> God said to me, um, I won't tell the whole story, but, well, might as well. <laughs> Ed would say to me, because there was 20 years difference, and in case you didn't know. <laughs> he was 20 years old. Just so you know. So he would, he would say, you know, um, I'm just going to live long enough so that you get just old and wrinkled and nobody else would have you. <laughs> Remember that he'd say that? And when he left, I thought, did I arrive at that? <laughs> right? So anyway, so he would say things like that and he would, uh, he would say, uh, if I weren't here anymore, you'd remarry. And I go, nope, I would not remarry. He, and he said, yes, you would. And I said, no, you're talking about you. <laughs> you're not talking about me. You'd remarry. I wouldn't remarry. It wouldn't be fair. Right? If you're married to Ed Dufresne, nothing else is fair. <laughs> and uh, Ed died on a Friday. And it was funny because Stephen, Stephen was so sweet. My oldest son, he said to me, he said, Mom, he said, uh, and it was interesting. The day Ed died, he's asking. The day that Stephen, no filter. He said, do you think you're going to remarry, Mom? And he was so sweet and, you know, kind and soft in it. And I said, no, baby, I'm not interested. And he said, that's right, because nobody's going to be a, try to be a, a daddy to me. I mean, he said, nobody's going to try to be a daddy to me, you know. And, and so he was very, his whole posture changed when he heard the answer. Like, okay, I can man up now. And that was on a Friday. And on a Sunday, God spoke to me and he said, don't even consider remarrying. And I said, you got a deal. You got a deal. And uh, I'm just so thankful that who God put in my life because it rescued my life. It rescued my life. I said it rescued my life. When he stood there and said, did you know that you were destined to be in a wheelchair in 10 years? The plan of God interrupted that. The will of God interrupted that. The right people in my life interrupted that. What the devil has set against your life the will of God will interrupt that if you'll stay with the will of God. Walk out that will by faith. 
Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. A right marriage will do that. You say, well, Pastor Nancy, I'm not so sure. I've made mistakes in those. Well, the grace of God will help you. The grace of God will help you. Amen. And he'll restore to you things that he wanted for you all along. So don't beat yourself up. But can I tell you how he's going to restore you? He's going to get you under a right pastor. He's going to get you under a right pastor. Yeah. You have to be in a place where restoration happens. And that's being divinely connected. You can't just stay out of connection and have things put back. Praise the Lord. How many of you say until healing? Something. Move that around. Something with your shoulder. You can tell. Yes. Your neck and your shoulder. What What was the matter with it? Just tight or? Yeah, I don't know. My trader couldn't do nothing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, and now you can. Nothing. So before in the service, healed. completely healed. In the service, I couldn't lift my hand all the way up. I uh-huh. couldn't do this. Uh-huh. And then I couldn't go all the way back. But God did something else in another service with the vertebrae in your back, no. right? Eight, eight um, uh, herniated discs. Eight herniated discs. And I, and I called out a word. I said, it's like your discs are disappearing. And that you said, you said that that's the same words the doctor said. He told me, he told me earlier, maybe a week before, or maybe a couple days before, it's almost like your discs are disappearing. Uh huh. The more same words. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, my back's completely healed. Completely healed. Now your shoulders and your neck, and now your trainer can work for you over hard. <laughs> Hallelujah. You learn this, right things happen when you're in right places. Wrong things happen in wrong places. Yeah. So sometimes just being in the right place, God told me the day my husband left, I said, oh God, okay God, who, who, do, I, who do I hook up with? There's no such thing as me not having someone to speak into my life. There's no such creature. And uh, I have so many wonderful minister friends so many who, who I receive so much from. Pastor Jay's one of them. He, they feed me. They feed me. Pastor, the Ramoses, Pastor Ike, that feeds me. And um, God said to me, pay attention to who I spoke to you through. Because scores of people called me that day and over the next couple of days of ministers. But Brother Copeland called me with the word of the Lord in his mouth. And he prophesied to me about my future. See, pay attention to those things. So I knew God said to me, he walks in graces that you need for your life if you're going to finish your course. He said even others who you've been hooked up with didn't have some of the graces he walks in. But yet the others I I was hooked up with had graces maybe that weren't emphasized with him. But there's a supply that comes. I just, let me tell you what happens. I book Brother Copeland's meetings first on my calendar. Those go on first. Every year, that goes first. Everything else of mine is after that. But I've got to be where he is. Why? Because time and time again, just when I go to the conference, and it's not by being around the dinner table with him, it's by being where I'm supposed to be. I show up, I get into a hotel room, to, like I'm getting ready to go to Southwest Believers. Um, I book, my, I get in a hotel room, I get unpacked, I go, I go to get in bed, and God starts talking to me about the future. He didn't do it while I was at home. He did it when I showed I'm where my man of God is. Just being where I'm supposed to be, God starts talking to me. It didn't, he doesn't even wait for the services to begin. He just starts talking to me where I'm suppo- when I'm where I'm supposed to be. Some people don't have what they need just because 
one thing, they're just not yes. where they're supposed to be. Yeah. You know who you're hooked up with, to be yes. hooked up with, but not there. That's right. And you miss some things. Well, praise the Lord. Somebody's gone along tonight, and it's been me. But thank God he's helping us. He's helping us. Hallelujah. Jesus, we praise you. We glorify you. You're such a wonderful healer. Such a wonderful healer. We magnify you. We glorify you. We glorify you. We glorify you. We glorify you. Thank you for healing. And just to let you know, anytime you see words of knowledge being called out in any service, God is not selecting certain ones. Now, don't misunderstand me. If a man of God says, if you're having a back trouble, come up here, and you're having a knee trouble and you come up, don't do that. That'll grieve the spirit. But when he moves that way and starts demonstrating healing power in the room, he's inviting you to release your faith. Even if your situation isn't called out, your condition isn't called out, you can release your faith because he's demonstrating what he'll do for anyone who will release faith. Amen. Amen. So no matter whether your condition was called out or not, you can release faith. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We glorify you. We glorify you. Tomorrow night, we will lay hands on anyone who needs healing. So you come expecting if that's you. But if you're here tonight and you say, Pastor Nancy, I can't be here tomorrow night, but I came here tonight specifically because I need healing, then I want to minister to you. This is not a general open call. This is just for those who cannot be here tomorrow night, but you came because you need healing. If that's you, come up and we will certainly minister to you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank you for it, Father. Congregation, just reach your hands out this direction. It matters to us that they receive what they need from God. Come on up here, love. Hallelujah. Y'all can step up just a couple. That's great. That gives the ushers more room to work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Congregation, you release your faith with us for them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I see you've got a boot on. Is, that, is there something else in connection with that? It's sprained. It's sprained? Yeah, I don't know how it happened. You don't know how it happened? Uh-huh. Yeah, oh. I was told I had to get elevated to a place in yeah. the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can't go back to work until it works. Can't go back to work too. Yeah, sure. Is there any other condition or is that the, the only the thing you need? Thing okay. Okay, they have put a chair. Go ahead and put it right behind him. They have put a chair behind you because we don't, we don't, we don't want to drop you. <laughs> Congregation, reach your hands out. Father, I thank you for that healing power. Ah, there goes that anointing in. We thank you for, ah, we thank you for that, Father. Ah, we thank you for that divine work. We thank you for it, Father. We thank you for it, Father. What about you, love? Arthritis in the knees, that swelling. hmm Yeah. 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 Father, we thank you for healing. We, we, ah, we thank you for that whole, making her whole in Jesus' name. Come back up here, love. Come back up here. We thank you for making her. Ah, ah. There it goes. What about you, love? A ruptured disc. A ruptured disc. We thank you, Father. We thank you for he, he, um, uh, we thank you for it. Come here, love. Come here. We thank you for that whole, wholeness. Mm. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our hands and worship him tonight. We glorify you. We magnify you. We praise you, Father. We praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you'll listen to me and listen to the things that Pastor Jay preached this morning. If you weren't here, listen to it. What Brother David preached. I'm just telling you that there are lives that God will put back on course. That you can recognize, you know what, that's what I did. I listened to different flows other than the flow God had me in. Listen, God put me with Brother Hagen. 
God put me with my husband because he wanted me in those flows. When they're not here, God's not changing my flow. He put me in those flows because that is my flow. Where did God put you? That's your flow. Stay with it. Don't let something that's introduced from the outside confuse you. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank you. And I'm just saying, by the Spirit of God, whether there are people in the room, people that are watching, but people also that will watch it later, it'll be a rescue for them to hear these truths. It'll be a rescue. And uh, people don't realize it, that lives are shortened when we aren't where God tells us to be. Why? Because, not because God does something to us, but because um, we're susceptible. Praise the Lord. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Father, we lift up those. We lift up those who have, for whatever reason, that their flow became unclear to them. The place they fit became unclear to them. Father, if it weren't for your grace and your goodness, we would all be in the same situation. And we pray for all those ministers, but also sheep that have been uh, duped away from their pastors. But also ministers who they recognize these things that have been addressed in these services, they're for me. Father, we lift up those who have veered. We pray. We pray for them. We pray for clarity. We pray, Father, for understanding. We pray, Father, that they would hear what they need to hear, see what they need to see, and do what they need to do. And we pray that anything that was lost to them in the veering would be restored. In yeah. Jesus' name, Mashtakaya, we lift them up in the spirit. Mashtakaya, Astoye, Ashtakaya, the Bestikiki, Mahahaya, Mahahaya, the Mastaka. We rejoice, we rejoice, we rejoice, we rejoice at the goodness of God. We rejoice at the goodness of God. We thank you, Father. We thank you for the divine rescue. Divine rescues, divine rescues. In Jesus' name. Father, these people know my heart. I'm not trying to draw anyone to me. I want them, in, I want them to be where God tells them to be. Just be where God tells you to be. Just be where God tells you to be. Amen. I don't want anyone to, if I could say this, think that I'm giving uh, a... Uh, I'm portraying that they need to be hooked up with me or they're out of the flow. That's not true. That's not true. That's not even right. Um, because if someone's not to be hooked up with me, that's, that's the last thing I want for them or me. <laughs> right? No, I, I just want to be where I'm supposed to be. I want you to be where you're supposed to be. That's when things work as they should. Let's sing something, Brother David. I can't let go of this real quick. Go ahead. It's right in connection with what Pastor was preaching. It's ironic. I went over this today in, in worship school. When I was a kid, we sang a song, obviously learned it from my dad. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, you think, well, that's us following Jesus. But it means more to me now at this age and stage of my life. Mm -hmm. Where we're supposed to be. Yes. Yeah. And who we're supposed to be with. That's him leading. Mm -hmm. So I don't care if you don't know it. Or <laughs> but uh, I'm going to sing it. Put up your hand the pastors. I'll just sing it for you. And if you know it, you can join me. Where he leads me Oh. 
loved you. All the way, all the way, all the way across the finish line. Praise God. Father, we are so grateful tonight for what you've given us. Your word tells us not to despise, not to despise correction. We receive our correction if we needed it. We're grateful for it, Father. It's your flow of love for us. Thank you for helping us tonight. Thank you for the utterance you gave tonight. Thank you. We thank you, Father, for the clearing that takes place. The cleansing and purging of our conscience as we make these adjustments and how things start becoming clear again. We're grateful, Father. Thank you as we go from this place. We'll continue to walk in the light of what we heard. We'll not fall back into old ruts or things that, we were, that we've been corrected in tonight. We consecrate ourselves to follow you purely. In Jesus' name, everyone that agreed said, Amen. Amen. Don't you love the word? We're hungry for whatever God has for us. And we love every flow, every, everything that he has for us. Praise the Lord. So we'll see you here tomorrow. Uh, morning at 10 o'clock. Um, Pastor Ike's going to be up to tomorrow morning. Pastor Ike's going to be preaching, so miss that. And uh, we'll see you here tomorrow morning. It's the same schedule tomorrow. Praise God. So greet your neighbor as you turn and both greet your neighbor and tell them, I'm so glad for what we heard tonight. It rescued us. Amen. It was a rescue. You're dismissed. <laughs>